Welcome. In this video lecture, I am going to talk about what is the dynamic lot sizing problem. So first of all, I am going to talk about what is a lot sizing. So lot sizing means how much particular product we should produce in a particular time period. So either you can call it as a lot size or you can say the batch size or even sometimes it is also known as production plan for the particular product, right? So uh, the lot sizing, I uh, mean, talking about how much quantity we should produce or even we should order. So if we remember that one of the basic uh, model that we can use for this purpose is the basic economic order quantity model. But uh, over this particular model, uh, we are considering the single product, okay? <clears throat> I mean, there is no capacity restriction, but the planning horizon we were considering that was the infinite planning horizon. That is, this is the time and we are saying that this cycle is going to be continuously for uh, infinite time period, right? But uh, if I'm talking about the dynamic lot sizing problem, the first condition is the same. That is single level, single item problem okay so talking about the single level which means we are not considering uh, the bill of material okay we are talking about the end product only okay <clears throat> and uh, we are talking about right now the single uh, product perspective there is no capacity restriction but in the second point of view uh, in a basic eoq model the time was the infinite planning horizon but in a dynamic, we are saying the planning horizon is a finite and it is not continuous, but it is divided into the several number of discrete time periods. So which means as you can see over here. So this is let's say the time period Tth and this is the time period T plus one. If I'm giving the example, let's say if we have the planning horizon four. So we are saying what is the demand in time period one? What is the demand in time period two? and this is time period three and this is time period four. So instead of considering the time in a continuous way, we divide the time into the discrete intervals, right? And it is the finite, not infinite, which means we are not saying for the infinite number of time periods, right? So as we have defined the planning horizon is the four time periods, either these four time periods could be the week or the month, okay? <clears throat> So due to this, because uh, at the start of every time period, we are going to take certain decisions, which mean uh, how much quantity I should order or you can say how much quantity I should produce. So remember that when we are saying in a lot sizing, how much quantity I should order, that, that means we are talking about in a supply chain environment. When I am saying how much quantity I should produce, which means I am talking about in a production environment or the production planning environment, right? So how much quantity I should order or how much quantity I should produce, right? As well as how much inventory of that particular product I already have at the start of this month. So the objective is to meet the demand of this particular time period, right? So we have to meet the demand of every time period. So there is no back orders are allowed as in the basic EOQ model, there is no back order, right? <clears throat> So therefore, because at the start of every time period, we are going to decide how we can meet this demand, whether we have enough inventory available to meet the demand of this particular product or whether we have to order or you can say we have to produce in this time period in order to meet this particular demand. So that's why we are saying this is a discrete period model or you can say the periodic review model. Uh, however, we have, uh, uh, but we have, uh, the basic EOQ model is a continuous time model and a continuous review model. So again, over here, the demand was the constant and it was given. But over here, we have against the every time period, the demand is changing over the time. Okay, but we know the demand of a particular time period, but that is changing over the time. So it D2 could be the different, D3 could be different and so on. So over here, I am showing you the diagram or you can see the graphical representation of dynamic lot sizing problem. So that means our decision variable is how much we should order or how much quantity we should buy. Okay, at uh, what is the inventory level of this time period we have. Okay, and in order to meet the demand of this time period. 
So uh, in order to solve this dynamic lot sizing problem or dynamic lot sizing model, we have certain assumptions. Uh, however, we would be able to solve this particular problem. So what kind of assumptions we are assuming that first of all, we are considering single product, not the multiple product. The demand of the product is known against every particular time period. OK, uh, so this is dynamic, but we should know this uh, demand. <clears throat> The planning horizon is finite and discrete time period. So which means we already decided whether we are going to develop the lot sizing plan or the production plan for the four months or the five months. That is the finite planning horizon and we divided into either months or the weeks. OK, and then the replenishment lead time is zero exactly look like the basic EOQ model. So which means if I am going to place the order over here, so I will get the order exactly at the same time even this model you can also apply if the lead time is constant as well okay but right now we are considering that the lead time is zero for the dynamic lot sizing so if i'm going to place the order we will get this order exactly at that particular time <clears throat> so uh, uh, furthermore the next is the inventory is reviewed at the start of every particular time period which means it's a periodic review model right uh, however the basic eoq model is was the continuous review model so over there we were not uh, observing the model with respect to the time we were observing with respect to the inventory level of that particular product so back orders are not allowed there is no capacity restriction whenever we are going to place the order or we are producing we say that we have the enough capacity so this dynamic lot sizing problem also known as single item means single product single level there is no bill of material we are considering uncapacity lot sizing model right so there is different variation uh, we can uh, observe in this particular problem so the variation we can have that let's say if we have the multiple item uh, what say if we have the capacity restriction what say if we allow the back orders but right now we are talking about the basic economic uh, dynamic lot sizing problem. I hope you got the idea. What is the basic dynamic lot sizing problem is so in the upcoming video lecture we are going to discuss what kind of methods or the algorithms we can use to solve this particular problem. So thank you so much. See you in the next video.